Welcome to Blue Talks. Okay, Blue Talks, how are you doing? Woo! Awesome. So I'm not exactly sure what happened. I don't know if it's the Columbia University graduation, but as my bio was being read, I just got kind of emotional today. Not really sure why, but we're gonna go with it. So 30 years ago, I was in the middle of what I like to call a holy crap moment. And that holy crap moment for me was a really bad divorce. And it was probably one of the lowest times in my life. And somebody introduced me to a personal development class, which nowadays it doesn't sound so weird. But then it was like, what is a personal development class? What does that even mean, personal development? And I attended an event and I saw the, the happiest people I'd ever met. They had, were graduating, right? After three days of doing a class. I'm like, how is that even possible that this is the happiest group of people and they just met? Didn't even know what the Kool-Aid was that they drank, but I knew I wanted it. So I signed up for the next class. And fate found me. I didn't know anything about the coaching. I'm just, okay. Speaking in our training world at that point. But I fell in love with it. And what I discovered was that we all have limiting beliefs. We all have an internal GPS that we have taken on from birth. From the ages zero to four, 50% of who we are today was being preformed by our environment by brothers, sisters, cousins, uncles, teachers, parents. From the age of five to nine, another 30% of who we are today, how we see ourselves, how we see life, how we see love, how we see money, how we see the world was being formed. From the age of 10 to 18, just for fun, another 15% of our internal GPS is being formed. Whether you graduated from high school or not, 18 years old, the way that you see yourself, the way that you see possibility, whether you how you see goals, how you see manifestation. You're a sponge growing up. Now the weird thing about it and what I learned and the reason why I became a coach is what I discovered in that personal development class 30 years ago is that it doesn't have to be that way. There's a different way to do it. But I didn't know that before I attended this class. And then I had a coach that helped me discover but that's not necessarily who I was, it's who I thought I was. I was like, what? What does that even mean? It's who I thought I was, it's not who I was. It was my set of glasses, the way that I saw myself. I didn't even know I had an internal GPS. It's like a computer program. Now, I know everybody that knows me, this is so funny because I make screens go green, so maybe this whole technology thing, I don't know, maybe it's my energy. But I discovered that there's another way to do things. And we all have mind shit and we get stuck in it. We have limiting beliefs. So what is the mind shit? Fear of success, fear of failure. We don't trust things. We have to be in control of everything and everybody. Some of us feel like we don't wanna do anything wrong. So what happens to opportunities in our life? We don't take them because we're worried about doing it wrong, or we have to do it all right, or have to be prefer perfect. I am going to profess that I am a recovering perfectionist, and I am getting over it, right? We don't know these things unless we're taught them. So 30 years ago, I was taught, oh my gosh, so this is not who I am, it's who I thought I was. So the problem with having a point A, right? This is our starting point. And then point B, having a goal that lights your soul on fire. 
We like to call that a barfalicious goal. Probably never heard that word before, right? Because I made it up. After 30 years of working with so many people, you know you have a really awesome goal when you have that barfalicious feeling. Like, oh, oh my gosh, that goal is so big. Who do I think I am? Like if I got that goal, woo, that would change a few things in my life. So you have that combination of excitement and that throw up feeling, right? That's how you know. Some of you are like, oh yeah, I have one of those right now. I see, I see you, I see you. That's a goal that's worthy of who you are. But the problem that we don't talk about enough as entrepreneurs, because I've worked with 30 years with so many people, is we start with our point A, right? And we're excited when we set that goal. I'm excited, woo! And then we start on the journey of making it happen. And what do we run into? Come on, you guys, work with me. What do we run into? We run into that mind shit, right? We get excited. And what does that, what does that feel like or sound like? We're having conversations in our head like, yes, I can. No, I can't. Yes, I can. No, I can't. I need more time. I need to think about it. I'm in analysis paralysis. And sometimes in life, we just become very serious and we become adults. So here in New York, my business partner and I went to FAO Schwartz. Hopefully I said that right. Those kids are not in their mind shit. They are in, why can I not have this? What's the problem? Like, let's go. Sometimes as adults, we are carrying around that hunchback of crap called our life. And we don't even know that we're doing it. They were excited. They're ready to make it happen. But sometimes we become adults. We don't even realize that that's what's in the way. So you have a goal, you're ready to make it happen, and you're excited, and you get into no man's land. And that's when it gets real interesting because you run smack dab into those limiting beliefs, that mind shit. Now, before I knew this information, so pre-30 years ago, how does it feel when all that's going on? It doesn't feel necessarily good. You can feel alone. You can feel afraid. You can be in analysis paralysis. And what is the instinct as a human being that you naturally want to do? Do you want to go towards your goal or do you want to go away from your goal? You want to go away from your goal. Why? Because this feels more comfortable. Yet what you want is over there. That's why this is such powerful information. That's why I've spent 30 years of my life coaching my clients. That's why they get extraordinary success so quickly. Because that's the first thing we do, is discover what are their top three limiting beliefs that are going to stop them. And then we have, if anybody knows who Chuck Yeager is, who broke the sound barrier, what it feels like when you're in this breakdown, breakthrough moment as a human being, how does it feel like, oh my God, that's how it feels. That's how it can feel when you're taking yourself on because what you want is over there. What you have is there. You have to be willing, as Kira was saying, to be a warrior. You have to be willing to step through this, but also to know this is what it takes. You're going to feel that breakthrough, personal glass ceiling, breakthrough the moment right here but it doesn't necessarily feel good. Nobody talks about it. We don't talk about fear as an entrepreneur, but you gotta get to the next level to get towards what you want. You gotta focus here versus there. So many people go towards what their goal, they're excited, and it's, they run backwards. Now, let's talk about this for a second. How much easier is it to go get your goal once you retreat and go here? It's super hard, because then you gotta get the courage up, you gotta be a warrior again, way harder. So you break through and there's three things that you got to do. You got to keep on going. You got to do choose and move and move and move, but this direction. But how does it feel? Uncomfortable. It can feel scary. You want to have it all figured out as a human being, but guess what? We don't have it all figured out. It never looks the way you think it's going to look and it always takes longer and could cost more. So what? So what? 
Stay focused on the end result. Stay focused on what you want. And here's the thing, and some of the speakers have talked about this in different ways today here at Blue Talks with Columbia in their own version of their story, is being resilient and overcoming tremendous obstacles. And that's when the magic happens, whatever that version is for you. But I think it's so incredibly powerful to know that this is actually the process of change. And I don't think enough people talk about it, and that's why I do. My clients say, oh my God, you just saved me like 10 years of therapy in like my first coaching session. I didn't know it was normal that this is my process. Yeah, you have limiting beliefs. And when you have a big goal, the limiting beliefs are not like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't think you can do that today. They're really loud because you have a big goal and your limiting beliefs want to pull you back to where you started. No. I believe you guys are here, whether you're watching or here today, because you have something major that you want to do in your life. And to whom much is given, much is required. And if not you, then who? And if not, now when? So on our flight here, we were actually filming the clouds and all the things. It was so cool because right as you're getting ready to lift off, off the ground into the air is a super cool time if you're paying attention. And that's what this is right here. You're getting ready to lift off. And it can be so exhilarating and so exciting and so scary all at the same time. And you're never gonna know what's possible for you unless you let go and make a choice to choose and move and move and move and move. So when you get here, you have to see it before it shows up. And the speakers have talked about that in many different ways. You have to believe it before it shows up. And then you have to be it, be confident, be tenacious, be all the things. In our business that we started July 23rd, 2004, I had been saying for a while that I wanted to start a coaching, speaking, and training business. And I was here. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start, Ooh, I'm gonna start a business. And I only have a dial. I'm like, what is that? I'm crazy. Didn't have leads. I'd moved to a new state. Didn't make sense. Dreams don't make sense. They're not logical. And then one day I said, that's it. I'm doing it. Doesn't make sense. And our goal was, our Barcelona's goal was to make six figures the first year. Because I figured, you know what? If you're going to do it, why not? I didn't have it all figured out. And we didn't make six figures. We made $98,853.23. Let me get it. Oh, yes. Come on, you guys. That's good, right? So how did that happen? Because I recognized that my mind shit was going to get in the way every day, and it did. My fear of failure. I got to do it right. I got to have it all figured out every single day. And I said, excuse me, you're not needed. You can leave me now. But if I didn't have that information, if I didn't recognize that that was what was going to get in the way, I would have quit. I had my resume on the ready. I have to say every single day for a year. And then finally I said, all right, let's face it. I'm unemployable. I'm an entrepreneur. Let's, let's go now. But that fear was present. And I had to be a warrior, be courageous, be all the things. You have to act as if it is so, so that it'll be so. And then I was like, oh, this is cool. I'd never made $98,850.23 for myself. I'd made it for a lot of other people. Let's see if it works for two, at $250. This is a cool game. Let's do it. I wonder if it works for 500,000. Same process. Wherever you're at today, whether you're watching or in the, in the audience today, doesn't matter what your point B is. Doesn't matter what your barfalicious bar goal is, your big goal. Works the same way. Here's your point B. Got to step into no man's land where it gets uncomfortable. You become a butterfly here. You got to be courageous. You got to be willing to 
ignore all this stuff, all that fear, all that mind shit, all that junk. It's, you're not needed. Leave it behind. It doesn't serve you. And look towards your goal. You got to be it. You got to see it. You got to believe it. Some people call it fake it till you make it. Because guess what? The universe doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know the difference. So you got to act as if it is so. So guess what? In my first year in business, I acted as if I was a six-figure business earner. What would that look like? So whatever your goals are today, what would it look like if you walk like that? Somebody said embodied that, talk like that. You are that. You be that. How much faster will it happen? A lot faster. And then you just do it again. No matter where you are today, it doesn't matter. Your goal can be as big as you want it to be. It's one choice away from making it happen. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much.